Good morning. In this pollen season, yellow pine dust is covering everything like snow. Yet, if someone asked me to name one thing that attracted me to North Carolina, I would immediately say pine trees. I love pine trees, but who knew there would be so much pollen? I think I'm finally getting used to it. Whenever I walk in the woods, I inhale the comforting smell of pines, and feel a soft carpet of brown pine needles beneath my feet. This brings back to a childhood memory. In order to cook, my family had to gather. Fallen branches, twigs, and pine needles for the fire. While attending the fire, I loved watching the bright orange color when those well-dried pine needles were burning. When I was about six or seven, I used to go with my mom, who raked pine needles in nearby mountains. She would make a big bundle of needles and twigs to carry on her head, and a small bundle for me to carry on my back. One day, a man appeared and shouted at my mom to put the pine needles back on the ground. He was the owner of the mountain. My mother pleaded with him to let her take the pine needles she had collected. But he refused and snatched her rake. My mom and I returned home with sad hearts and empty hands. At the time, in my hometown in Korea, some mountains were public and some belonged to individuals. My mom would argue that there was no way to know the boundary lines between those mountains. The day we returned home empty-handed, I experienced scarcity, and the experience caused me never to forget how hard my parents worked with limited resources to raise their nine children. I also learned to be tough and resilient from the challenges of external material conditions. And this led me to appreciate the spirit of generosity that can transcend individual ownership. Now, living in North Carolina, pine needles seem to be everywhere. Even in the temple parking lot, we frequently rake pine needles and pine cones into piles at the edge of the property. Whenever I step on pine needles during my walks, I feel the aching memory of my childhood and my parents' struggle. I also heal myself with the notion that in a world of abundance, there is enough for all if we are willing to share with a loving kindness. As you can tell from this story, I have a special nostalgic feeling about pine trees from my upbringing. Pine trees were always my favorite subject to sketch or paint. From their symbolic meaning, healing properties, and practical uses, pine trees in Korea are much appreciated, with the beautiful arched shapes. Red bark and fragrant evergreen needles—they can live for hundreds of years. There is a book called *Pine Trees in Korea: Aesthetics and Symbolism*. The author Jae Shik Sa describes pine trees as the faithful, lifelong companions of Korean people who spend their lives sheltered in pine wood houses. And upon death, are buried in pine wood coffins. 
He describes how pine trees in Korea are like beautiful living sculptures, sometimes stretching straight up to the sky, and sometimes growing gnarled and carved and twisted. As these trees grow old, they develop thick bark with a deep folds and furrows, a roughness that slowly melts into oblivion when the trees die and decay into the earth. Because of their special beauty, pine trees are often used as a motif in Korean art, literature, and folk tales. You can see why I felt immediately at home with the pine trees here in North Carolina. But over time, I have observed that pine trees here are not the same as the ones in Korea. Certain species here are grown quickly for lumber, and many pines do not live very long. Some time ago, on a freezing winter morning, as I entered the Dharma Hall, I heard a thunderous thump behind me. I turned around and saw that a huge, healthy pine tree had fallen down over our fence and across the whole parking lot. Soon after, fresh pine aroma filled the temple yard. I was glad no one was hurt and that there was enough distance between the tree and the temple buildings. That day, I learned that roots of pine trees here are not deep, even though the trees themselves grow straight and tall. What accounts for this difference? Korea's many mountains are composed mostly of granite, so the pine trees struggle to survive. Their roots must snake around many rocks to firmly hold onto the earth. Under the pressure of heavy winds, the trees bend and curve in order not to easily break. These forces challenge the trees, but also make them strong and beautiful. We all heard that what doesn't kill us makes us stronger. To me, enduring hardship is not fun. So it is hard for me to say, welcome challenges, come and make me stronger. <laughs> When I face challenging sensory conditions, two wishes often arise in my mind. Hmm, I wish this challenging matter or the challenging person would disappear. Or I wish my ego-based self would disappear. Which one sounds more realistic to you? There are many moments in our lives when harsh and undesirable conditions can make us stronger and more resilient. I try not to forget that these challenging conditions can create more grace, and greater benefit for me in the long run. The wisdom of pine trees, facing daily challenges with an open, enduring mind and mindful choice in action, strengthens our inner power. The beauty and strength of pine trees is earned by their not giving up and by their practice of endurance. One of our teachers, Master Chung San, said, It is difficult to endure hardship, but if you endure it again and again, your numinous elixir will be strengthened. It is difficult to be steadfast, but if you keep at it, your mind powers will accumulate and you will attain freedom in all things. 
My journey from Korean pine trees to the ones here in North Carolina have brought me another special wisdom. I can let go of my expectations and appreciate things just as they are. Right after our new Dharma Hall was built, I searched around everywhere to find an Asian pine tree, but I could not find any. Then our neighbor temple, Chapel Hill Zen Center, found something similar as a gift for us and planted a black pine tree right in front of our new Dharma building. As I had yearned to bring some Asian beauty to our temple gardens, I gave much care to growing this pine tree into a bonsai shape. Eventually, I realized that the pine tree could not grow like the ones in Korea. To grow into a classic curved line, pine trees require certain environment which includes windy and stormy weather and a hard ground with a rocky soil. I think the conditions we have here for pines are much too smooth and peaceful. Living and working in the Carolina Piedmont soil, I cannot create Korean-style pine trees, but I have come to appreciate the vibrance and abundance of trees here, and to enjoy the common characteristics of pine trees around the world. The wisdom of pine trees is helpful for me. My everyday struggle and practice is to let go of preconceived baggage and expectations from my cultural background. My wish is to share Dharma with all, but I am doing so with a mind that was nurtured in Korean soil, and I am living in community with people whose mind have been nurtured in American soil. Every day I am learning to become a true gardener who transcends the barriers of a language and social boundaries. Thankfully, the spirit of pine tree resilience and determination from my ancestral roots continues to live within me as I adapt to and embrace Western cultures in my heart. Dear friends, would you like to walk with me among the pine trees? Who knows what we might learn? May the forest enlighten our travels. May the forest be with us. <laughs>